Hey everybody, Scraft here. Welcome back to Farm Simulator 22. We're back on our Let's Farm series. Uh, we're going to carry on. It is pretty much the wind down now in this series. I did say in the last episode, they've probably got about five left. So I'd say after this one, there's going to be three. Because I think that was, in f yeah, it was five before. I'm getting confused now. Yeah, it was five before. This will be fourth. Uh, there'll be four left, including this. And then three going after this. So we're on the wind down. We're trying to just do a few jobs that we set up, play the game, have a bit of fun, have a chat about FS25 stuff, anything else that's going on and so on. Uh, but yeah, there's no real kind of like set rules anymore. We're just going to lease what we need, not worry about money, and we're just going to have a bit of fun. So let's have a quick update of what we've done. We can hopefully make this video about 30 minutes long. Hopefully, normally I try and do like 45 minute episode, but we'll, we'll go a bit shorter this time around. I have done a video already about some FS25 stuff that we'll talk about. That would have come out today at one o'clock for you guys. I'm recording it prior to the day before. Uh, but yeah, to set up for this episode, I went and sold the soybeans I had. I rented out the train, sold that, got about 70 odd thousand pounds. So that wasn't too bad at all. Looking at the barley that we've picked up, we did quite a bit of that. We will be selling that at some point as well, going into January. But we're pretty much just going to try and work through, sell all the stuff and finish off in a nice way because there's not really much else we can do. It's just, yeah, I didn't have a chance to play on this series as much as I liked, but it's kind of, yeah, it's a closing series really of FS22 because it has been a good game overall. I've put a lot of hours into it, thousands of hours, um, and it's been yeah, a joy to play, to be honest, at times, and do the series like The Farm and On and so on. And uh, you guys have been supporting me pretty much all the way through FS22. So thank you so much for that. Honestly, it means a lot for me. It puts a load of hours and dedication into my channel to have you guys with me. Because, you know, you get, if you if you didn't watch, I wouldn't make, the, obviously, the videos. So thank you so much for that, because I feel like I share my gameplay with everyone. Um, and I love actually reading through all the comments, what everyone else is doing as well, as I'm sure every other content creator does. But let's have a quick look at what's left. These three fields we did, they were supposed to be like our crop fields for straw and profit, which was the barley that we got through. Barley is in the, the silo. The straw, I've done all the baling and put them into the kind of like storage point for bales and bits and bobs as well. Uh, but we have got sunflowers that we're going to do that. We're probably going to try and do that in one big episode where we do the sunflowers and we also do the production and speed through and get the, the sunflower oil, sell all that. That's got to be a goal. We've got a maize silage field up here that's going to be done in a bunker but the one we're doing today is is field three we're going to be doing whole crop silage and because we're doing whole crop we don't need the crop to mature as if we were making grain from it because it is a field of wheat we want to try and get it early while it's still green still you know not dried out uh because that's the perfect time to make whole crop so that's what we're going to do today i've leased out this massive crone uh it's, i think it's the big m yeah the big m and it is massive. It's a really good mower, and I haven't used it as much as I did in FS19. This has always been a favorite of mine in FS19. I remember doing countless hours of mowing with this on FS19, uh, Oakfield Farm and Sandy Bay and things like that using this. Uh, but it's kind of not, yeah, not been one of my go-tos this time around. I think I've preferred the normal kind of butterfly style mower. Um, but so it's gonna it's gonna be nice to try this out as well, thinking of all the times I've used it in FS19 and we're about to hit FS25. It's not long now. Uh, I've also leased out this Crone mower, the Swadro TC930. Might not need that because that drops out in a row, but I wanted to have it just in case. I did want to carry on the Crone vibe we've got going on, but I decided to go with the Pottinger because it's got a wrapper kind of built in. I haven't got a combination Crone wrapper and baler. Uh, there's probably a mod out there, but I just didn't have, but I haven't got it currently on the series. So we're going to be using this and we're going to make some bales of it. It should be interesting. Let's jump into the big M. <laughs> the big M. 450. She is a beast. If we can get into it. There we go. Start her up. I mean, can you imagine if you were a farmer and you had one of these in real life? Just as a mower. I mean, you, you must be in some serious cash or doing some serious mowing to just justify paying for one of these. They're, they're massive. They really are. Now, we are going to do crop damage, so we're going to have to time this well. It's a strange one as well, because when you're mowing, like, say, just the grass, it's going to come up as fresh grass for a bit, so we have to make sure we kind of... Yeah, we have to make sure we get really into the boundary on the edge. We can't go into the grass at all. It'll start turning that left-hand side into fresh grass instead of the whole crop, or the crop swath is what we need. So let's have a look if we can turn this into dropping a... 
Yeah, because it's on widespread in right now. We don't want that. We want to try change that to swath dropping. So now we technically don't really need the windrow, but we'll see. We'll see how it works. Start it up, and you can see it is starting to mow, but we're going to get fresh grass, see, in the middle, and that's not what we want. We want to get this stuff, this, this dropping out now. That's crop swath made from wheat. And it's obviously brought to us by Maze Plus. Now, I know a lot of people play Maze Plus, but there's some people that kind of hold off. Um, I understand that. Is that. There is quite a bit to it, especially with the Terra Life Plus that's come out there. I haven't actually done on the channel yet. I was holding off, but with there being so little time left, I think I'm just going to wait for the FS25 version. There'll be a lot more information out by the time, you know, that happens. Um, because I, I really like the idea of it. I have wanted to try it out, but I wanted to do it right. I've basically not wanted to get on to something that I can't really talk about as much or showcase or even, you know, show advice or, or somewhat a tutorial for people that want to try it out. If I haven't got the information there, then I can't do that well enough. And you guys deserve better than me just kind of winging through it. So I have hold off for that reason. But I, I would have liked to try it out and I probably should have tried it out a bit more in like a personal save game. But it's all about time that you have. Um, not really had too much time to do that. But I have tried it out somewhat and it does offer a lot of stuff the Terra Life Plus does but yeah in FS25 it will be back and by that point we'll have some kind of PDF for me to read through learn and then I can you know offer advice and showcase it in a better light um, because it did start off with a few bugs and errors and it's not a fair representation of it at that point because you know it's things like that that offer such a, a vast change to the game there's going to be teething issues at the start I think it's just inevitable but here we are, we're getting through it, doing well. Mowing away some wheat, kind of feels like a bit of a waste, but it's for the feed. So, you know, the cows would be happy feeding this. We're going to have a mixture, technically, and we're not going to really get to use it as much just because we're moving over to 25 on a Let's Play series. But, you know, you've got to think of it like this. Cows do really well when you feed them stuff that are like high in sugars and offer different nutrients. So if you're going to have a mixture of, like, maybe grass salad, hay, and then some whole crop salad that offers a different range of variety when it comes to um, yeah a different variety when it comes to nutrients and then you've got really high sugar content maize salad as well it's going to be really good for you as a farmer if you're producing milk or so on so I get the idea of it it is realistic I've worked in a laboratory a lot of people know this about me because I've said it before some people might not actually known this as well but I, that used to be a job of mine I used to work in a laboratory testing animal feeds um, specifically animal feeds and also fresh fodder so if that was grass that was harvested or you know a whole crop or a maize silage i did that and tested it so i know the benefits of each one and it is you know realistic enough to think yeah this does happen on farms especially uh, in the uk which probably a lot of people wouldn't think but it does so i like the fact that maize plus and the farm and agency add it in I'm definitely one to pretty much play with Maze Plus on every kind of playthrough. I do. So, I, I yeah, I'm grateful for it being in the game. I just like precision farming as well because I think that adds a lot to it as well. Now, FS25, I said I'd talk about that. It is important to do. We've had a lot of information drop about NPCs. I was honest in my video that came out earlier on today saying that I'm 50-50, stuck on the fence with it. I think it's a great idea and a good starting point. I just hope that it offers a little bit more than the information giants have kind of provided on it. I don't want it to be just a couple of NPC characters that we just talk to to get information of and they're just static. They have a spot and they stay there. I also, I do, I do understand that they can't have like a story mode. It's, they've already specified giants have to, uh, I don't know if it's just to the, the content creators but they have specified that it isn't a story mode so it's definitely not going to be that but they do provide contract missions and a lot of information regarding the maps that they're on so some of the construction missions that happen uh, which there is a lot more of now uh, they can provide information for that so they're not just a person to randomly chat to they are going to obviously do random chit chat and stuff like that and a few facts and bits and bobs around the map uh, but they do offer like contract missions and information on the construction missions but it's the story if you wanted that that it's going to be lacking in now I would have really liked to have seen that just because 
I think it has a, a, such a good amount of gameplay that we can all experience. Uh, I gave an example out in that video, which I think is where I would love to see it, which is, can you imagine if there's a neighboring farmer and he's having some like mechanical troubles, for example, and you are asked to go around, speak to him. He speaks to you and says, listen, do me a favor, do the mowing on this field, bail it up for me. I'm struggling at the moment, my, my equipment's out. If you do it for me, I'll pay you some money. Things like that, just scenarios, random and random kind of encounters as they're called in other games and stuff like that. I think that would have been a really nice touch to add in. I think a lot of players would have felt more immersed on a farm and, you know, maybe even modders could be allowed to tailor it and customize it. Get content creators like myself to do vo voices like George and say, you know, because Oxy could say, fancy doing George as a character. We'll put him into a farm as a neighboring farmer and you can do some lines for me. He can put it into the, his map. And then you as the player playing on a map could experience maybe George as a neighbor saying, you know, from the distance, stop bloody faffing <laughs> over the edge. Um, and maybe giving you a few tasks, you know, as he's, he's doing his technical decision-making saying, can you come and help me out? And you could, you know, it doesn't have to be long. Maybe it's only like 10 missions or 10 random farm tasks it gives you, but you could be the farm hand for a bit. Um, I'd love to be able to do that, but I don't know if it's going to be locked behind the Giants kind of section that they don't allow you to mess with as modders. For example, if you look at pedestrians that walk around, as much as you know, modders can apply pedestrian sp splines onto a map to show where they're going to walk, you can't actually customise what the pedestrians look like. I'm pretty certain of that. So, you know... Again, it's it's behind a kind of a locked area that giants don't want you to mess about with. Um, they do have that kind of section. It's not a vast amount of the game, but there is certain things you're not allowed to play with. DLCs, for example, you're not allowed to kind of modify um, because, you know, it's paid content that's extended on. And if you're adding it into a mod that then becomes free, they lose out, which makes sense. So... Yeah, I don't know how it's going to work. I hope that modders can have a mess about as well. I think that'll be really good to see. But I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen with it. We can just wait and see, can't we? But I like the idea of it. I think it's a good step in the right direction. A lot of people want some kind of story mode, role play. Or, you know, uh, NPCs are a vital thing for towards that. Having someone to kind of talk to on a map that kind of that has the audio. Um, and the, you know you can hear it and they're vocalizing and the, you know they've got lines basically pre-recorded lines isn't a bad idea it reminds me of fallout as well what i've seen it's got that kind of fallout vibe to it so they're doing all right they're doing all right i just uh i just hope it's going to be more and from the information giants give out i don't think it's going to be what we want it's not going to be a story mode that's confirmed and I think the only type of missions they're going to give you are contract missions. So, I mean, that technically is like a farmer helping out. It just depends how they're going to word it and stuff. But um, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing in a good direction. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting to see. I think we, before we get hands on, we can't really say for certain, can we? So we'll wait and see on that one. But the constructions that they're doing. Like the construction missions, they look pretty good. They look pretty interesting. Good for logging. Good for logging fans that want to carry on the logging, like they did on Silver Run and stuff like that. And you built that roller coaster. You know, there's more of that going to happen, which is good to see. I think a lot of people will be happy about that. But for me, the most important thing, and I think this is something I'm going to be really happy about doing in the game, is we've now got the option. Uh, let's just quickly let's go to 150s. I think that's probably a good size. Yeah, we have now got the option in-game, which is going to be super cool, to build our own farmhouses and barns. And if you haven't seen that, go check out the video I released today at 1 o'clock because there's some picture in there. In fact, the thumbnail is a picture of a farmhouse you can build, and it's super cool. It really is super cool to have your own farmhouse. That Say you're doing a start from scratch and all the older equipment that we've seen, you know, it's going to be super cool to just think, right, I can place down, I can place down like this farmhouse. It's not going to cost me much, but I need to go and take the logs to it. So, is that, have I got that set to automatic drop? I have now. Yeah, so we can take the logs to it, basically. Um, so, you know, all that logging you do, like on a survival or a start from scratch playthrough, 
it now has meaning to you. You can go take your logs, you can take other things that you need to produce and uh, manufacture in some kind of production aspect. You can now take them to a house, to a barn, and start manually building up your farm with the things you've gone and harvested. A bit like a, a survival game, like uh, Icarus. Because uh, I, I say about it because I really like that game, Icarus. But it reminds me of that. It's got that same kind of vibe to it, but but not as in-depth because of, for obvious reasons, because of the farming aspect to it. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a, a really good idea. I'm intrigued to try it out. And... Oh, oh, that was close. I've done a little bit of crop damage there, but not enough to, to cry about. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think about that. It would be interesting to see if, if anyone else shares my view on that. Are you excited to do, you know, a start from scratch series? I think now the start from scratch series, with all the equipment they've added in, the, the John Deere, that white tractor, the Massey Ferguson, there's a few other bits and bobs that we've seen. I think it's probably the best it's been for older equipment, vintage stuff in a way. And now that we can build our own farmhouses and barns, you know, I, I can't wait to try that out. I think that's going to be the first kind of series that I'll do, like a Let's Farm, Let's Play series, um, that I'll really enjoy. It might be even the one I do with Beanie. And, uh, yeah, I'll look forward to doing that, definitely. That bell's going to go rolling down the hill, isn't it? I'm going to have a load of them at the end. Just hit the bottom. But this is going to be a really easy job. Not take long at all. We'll fly through it. We'll... Uh, probably let them ferment just i'll bring them in actually i'll bring them in i'll use the auto load trailer that i've got and uh, we'll bring them in but we're doing we're doing well so far got some fresh grass on the side like i mentioned as, as we head head off it is actually worse when you do widespreading but luckily because we got the the inbuilt swaffer on that mower it's uh it didn't drop too much of it but i think what are the bale size about seven thousand yeah i think they're bang on Oh, they're a bit more. 7,500 then. So not bad at all. That's the 150 size. You could do bigger bales and, and haul less. But I think if you think about how they're going to be for feeding cows, it's probably about right. And we don't want to do, you know, we don't want to do too many big bales because it all gets consumed in the mixture. It becomes a bit more difficult then. But yeah, so far so good. Easy enough work as well. Nice steady job for this episode. Next one's probably going to be a bit more in depth. We've got, like I said, we've got sunflowers that we're going to have to turn into the actual sunflower oil as well. So that's going to be a long one because we're going to have to skip time and things like that and do two process. We're going to have to harvest and then send it through a production, wait for it to all be processed and then sell it. Probably the one around the same time. So it might come after it or before, but we'll be doing May silage in a bunker. Um, and I'm going to try and do that where I'm actually doing the harvesting or I'm driving the chopper basically and the the cart is the one kind of done by auto drive and uh, dropped off and stuff like that so yeah we'll see how it works I might do follow me mod because that's always a good fail safe for it if uh, the auto drive is playing up but it's the dropping it off and having you know it is possible to drop it off using auto drive into the bunker and then using another um, a, another mod we can yeah, we can actually um, compact the bunker as well at the same time. So we really, we should just have to drive, if it all works to plan, just drive the chopper and the rest is done through having a, a worker. Fingers crossed anyway. <laughs>
right, there we go. Short but sweet one in this episode. Dead easy job. I think it's only going to be about 20 odd minutes long this episode, which ain't too bad at all. Probably just one of the shortest episodes I've made for a long time. So, yeah, nice easy watch. Uh, but we got the whole crop silage done. It is crop swath at the moment. It's it's fermenting. We've got one bale that I finished up with that's hit the 125 size. So that's out in the field. I'll have to sort that out. Uh, but we can see, but you can see they've got a few here that are seven and a half thousand fermenting crop swath. I did try and put them into this over here that I put that bale storage that's actually part of, uh, is, is on LSFM. So uh, basically what you see on Hof Bergman, uh, but it's not accepting him. It, it looked well, it is, but it looks like that. So I've taken them out. I'm going to just leave them here and probably get rid of this. But I need to move these out of the way first before I can take the final three out. It's a strange one as well, because if you go up to it, you, you have to kind of like configure it. It doesn't just take all all the types. So if I can't actually configure it right now because I've got these in. But if I try and take. Yeah, it won't let me spawn because delivery space is blocked. But you, yeah, you basically have to configure them. So I did try to configure them first as crop swap, thinking that's what it'd be that it accepts. But no, I had to configure them to silage. So actually what whole crop is technically going to be, um, it's always silage and then grass silage is, is its own specific one. Uh, but yeah, the only problem is it just looks like this. So I don't know what's going on with the sides there. It's probably got something to do with the fact that the bales are rounded or maybe the colour. I don't know, but it doesn't matter too much. We're going to put them in storage. I will take them out and just, you know, put them somewhere better. In fact, we can quickly just do that. Why not? And I'll show you what I mean by when I'm configuring it. It's a, it's just a strange one. Ooh, tree there. Nearly, nearly. Right, so we got them out. So let's see if we can actually do this now. Still blocked. And that should now work. There we go. So yeah, we can see that we can just spawn all three out. And it's spot on. So let's just quickly put them onto the trailer. Swing it around. And I might just put them into that, you know. I think that would be a good point for them to be stored for a bit. Oh, wrong, bu wrong button. <laughs> Probably about there should do it. Right, let's see if we can swing them about there. Drive a little bit forward. That's probably the best place for them. They're on a bit of an angle, but th that'll be all right. In fact, that's probably a better spot than ever before. There we go. A bit of crop swath to last us quite some time if we could actually use it in time before FS25 but I'm glad I've done it because I enjoy that I enjoy that I enjoy that what Maze Plus offers doing maize silage crops uh, doing the crop swath or things like that so it's nice to do that one last time eh, on FS22 but no this is what I mean so you can go to configuration and you've got all these types like different size bales what they are CCM corn grain grist chaff on its own fresh maize before it's been fermented then maize silage and you can see they're all different sizes and shapes of bales so you've got the 125 rounds up to the 180s and then you've got the squares 180s up to the 240s so i went with the 150 crop swath because that's what it technically is right now but it wanted me to do silage so not the grass silage but silage which is down there so i did the 150 one but still not working so don't matter we can actually sell it really don't even need it let's just sell it 50 quid in the back pocket jobs are good but there we go that's pretty much everything on this episode did say at the start it was going to be a short one next one will be a, a lot longer even if we do may silage or we do uh the uh the sunflowers what we're planning on doing with that but yeah really we've got well three episodes left after this and two big jobs left so i don't know what i'll be doing in the last one We'll have to see, but <laughs> but we'll we'll definitely go out on a bit of a bang. Maybe set up some kind of challenge, massive field in the last episode, knowing that it's going to be our last Let's Farm Let's Play episode on FS22. So before I go, I just want to thank everybody that watched the Farman video. Um, it was an epic episode. I was very happy with how it turned out. I'm very proud of it. 
Um, that story I was playing out for quite some time. It went and spanned over 10 episodes within the, within the farm. And if you follow it, you'll already know. It was a, a very tear-jerking episode. I had a lot of people, a lot of people that cried. It's the quickest episode I've ever had that got to a 1,000 likes. And it still blows my mind that I got 1,100 likes right now when about 7,000 views on it. So it's incredible that you guys, you know, reacted that way. And I've also had over 300 comments on it. And it's the it's the only video that I've not got to yet that I need to put comments on. So I will get to it. I will get to everyone's reply. It's a lot of comments to work through, but I'll try my very best to reply to at least 100 of them. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for such kind words. I mean, they're all positive and it's insane to think. Uh, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. That's all I can say. I've When they keep popping up and I get in the notification on my phone, whatever, I have read through. So I've read through probably at least half of them already. Uh, but I will take the time to sit down and go through them and reply. But yeah, they've all been so positive and the support you guys show me for that series is incredible and it's the reason I still do it after 200 and odd episodes I do it because you guys love it so much and because of that it makes me want to keep doing it keep getting better keep being more creative and who knows where it's going to be in two years time three years time who knows um, but I guarantee you this it will be on FS25 and it will be going on through the whole stint of FS25 as long as you guys watch it we just got to be patient for mods to come out. We need Oxy's map to come out as well. And good things take time. So it will still be on FS22. I'll still actually be playing FS22 for quite some time. Just because the farming series will still be happening on the weekends. But my FS25 series will be on Let's Plays. Me and Beanie will be playing on one. So I'll still be very, very active on FS25. But yeah, thank you so much for the support you showed me on that. It really is overwhelming and uh, it means the world to me. It makes me very proud. So thank you so much. But on that note, I am going to leave the video there. So thank you so much for watching today. really do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give it a thumbs up because that does help me out. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator. See you, everybody.